In this video, I'm going to give you some instruction about how to use a database IDE to interact with the database on Faraday. This is something that you can use for your ORM homework. You can also use it during the development of your project for the rest of the semester to add stuff to the database, to create your schema, to introspect what you've got there, to read and write data, to visualize the ERD, and so forth. The tool that I would recommend is called DataGrip. It's from JetBrains, which are the same people that make IntelliJ and WebStorm and PyCharm and all those other good tools. Uh, it's the database IDE that I prefer. There's a bunch of other ones out there. If you've got something that you'd rather use, that's fine. But if you don't have something set up and already working, this is what I would recommend you get. You can download a free trial of DataGrip that expires after a little while. But what I would recommend is that you actually get a license for it. JetBrains is very generous in terms of giving educational licenses to students and teachers that basically give you access to almost every tool that they make. So all the ones that I mentioned before and more. Uh, they're also super good about not sending you spam and a bunch of extra junk mail. Uh, so they respect your privacy really well. I've been using this license for many years now and I've been really, really happy with the way that they, they've treated me over the years. Download this and get it installed. Just follow the instructions with the download. Next, you're going to fire up DataGrip. I've got a little helper toolbox from JetBrains that gathers all of these executables together. So I'm just going to run DataGrip. And what you want to find is the database tab. And it shows you a list of the database connections that you currently have active. If you don't see that tab right away, you can go to the View menu and choose Tool Windows and Database, and it'll open it up for you. Uh, first thing I need to do here in order to connect to Faraday is to fire up the VPN. So I'm going to connect to Taylor VPN, and then fill in my password and hit Connect. Don't forget that step. It won't work very well and if you're off campus to not be on the VPN. All right, then in the database window, we're going to hit the plus button to create a new connection. We go to data source. There's a ton of databases that are supported by JetBrains products. Uh, we're going to choose Postgres. And we'll get a pop-up that has information about the connection we're going to create. So just to make this more specific, I'm going to say Faraday. Uh, via TU Virtual Private Network. You can put anything you want there. It's just going to show up in the list over here with that name. Uh, we're going to connect to the server called Faraday. That would have been information that you could have found in the email that you got from me the other day with your database connection information. Leave the port number the same. That's the default port that Postgres listens on. For some reason, this is asking for a PG Pass authentication. You want it to say user and password. Now, this is uh, the place where you're going to put in the information again from that email address. I gave you the server name or the host name and your user ID and your password and uh, also the database name. Now, in this example, I'm just going to connect to the DVD rental database, which is what you, you know, just got done using with the, the uh, ORM homework. But when you come to start working on your project and you want to have access to your own database that you can make changes to and so forth, uh, use the database name that came with the email that I sent you and then the, the username and the password as well. So I'm going to type in my username and then my password. And as I said, I'm going to choose the DVD rental database. I can check the connection with this test connection button. That's super helpful to make sure that everything's working. If you get a green check mark and this information, that means that you're now connected to the Faraday database. You can hit OK, and it's going to save all that information along with your configuration of data grip. You can see that it was thinking there a little bit about this new connection that I've created. And we can drill down into here to see there's one database called DVD Rental that I've connected to. It can have multiple schemas. We're going to use the public one. And then within that schema, here's the list of tables. So these are all of the same tables that we've been working with throughout the semester. Here's the film table uh, that shows you all of the films that are in the database and so forth. Um, you can go into this, uh, into the IDE. You can do things like make changes to rows. Just go in here and type stuff in. You can add new rows with the plus. You can delete rows with the minus. Uh, and 
basically manipulate any of the data that you want in any of your tables. There's a different way that you can access the uh, database a little bit more flexibly by being able to issue arbitrary SQL commands. Uh, pretty much anywhere in the database hierarchy here, you can uh, right click and do jump to query console, and that's going to open up a console for you. Uh, you can also, uh, once you've selected something here, you can click on this QL button and that will take you to a particular console. And you can see what comes up here is, looks just like a sort of text editor window, but it's actually a live screen that lets you issue queries. So I can say things like select star from uh, category and usually separate your, you can have multiple SQL statements in the same console window and it's useful to separate them by semicolons. Um, you can run a command by hitting this play button, or you can also, as you see here in the shortcut, you can uh, enter a shortcut command. You can also actually um, right click on the query and hit run console. So any of those things will work. And what'll happen is it'll run that query behind the scenes and give you a output that looks quite similar to what we saw when we were just clicking through the individual tables. Um, to execute that query. Now, of course, you have complete access at this point to being able to put in whatever kind of query that you want. So I could say um, select star from query from category where um, name uh, like let's see uh, a percent. That should give me all of the ones that start with a, and I execute the query, and that's what I see in my result set. Some other kind of neat things you can do up here, you can um, actually ask the, uh, the IDE to reformat your code. And it will give you some nice sort of formatted stuff. This is a pretty simple query, so it's not super evident here. But it will um, sort of tidy up your code in the same way that a, a, a traditional code editor would, would uh, help you out. You can also um, run queries and rely on some of the help that the IDE gives you. So let's say, for example, I want to print out a report of all of the cities and their countries in the database. We've talked about that a few times. Um, you, can, you can take advantage of the IDE's autocomplete capability. So I'm going to say select star for the time being from, uh, let's go from city. And then I want to be able to do a join with the country table so I can get both the city name and the country name. So I can say inner join. And you can see already that the completion has already kind of figured out what kinds of things I might want to inner join with city. So it's looking to see who's got foreign keys and primary keys and what tables. And here, this very first one, actually, um, it allows me to join uh, an address with a matching city. Um, that's not what I want to do. I want to actually join with a country. And so all I'm going to do is click on that and it adds it into the into the query. The, the IDE is also very keen on giving you uh, aliases for, for table names. So although we could spell out, spell out country in its entirety, this little C here that it adds for you makes C an alias for the country table name. And then when it's um, creating the on clause here, we're trying to get the this country ID from the country to match the country ID from the city. Remember that the city has the foreign key that refers to the country because it's on the many side of the relationship. And I think we should just be able to execute that. Now you can see because there's multiple queries in the console window that it asks you which one do you really want to run. And it highlights that for you. So I'm just going to hit enter here to run that query. And we can see down here that we get um, city ID, city, city, country ID, and so forth. So we're getting, because we're asking for uh, select star, we get all of the fields. We can go up here and refine this a little bit and say, let's get um, city dot city, which is the name of the city, and country dot, oops, dot country. It's not liking that because I've already got an alias for country set up down below. So I really only need to say c.country. And now if I run this, again, I've got to disambiguate which one I want it to run. And now I get city and country. And you can go, here, go through here and um, continue to use, uh, continue to refine the query. So if I wanted to say um, order by uh, c.country, 
you can see it's doing autocomplete for me, um, ascending, um, and then by uh, city dot city, and we'll. Do that. Okay, so now we're getting uh, sorting by the country and then by the city. So uh, any, let's see, and I can also do the, the reformatting thing. Again, up here, code, uh, reformat code, and it redoes this. And you can see here, because we're doing inner joins, it likes to kick out the inner join a little bit to make it a little bit more clear that we've got several different um, uh, several different tables in view here. So that's a, a really great way to, to debug queries. Um, uh, if you're doing uh, like connects work or uh, objection ORM work, one of the things that I find helpful when the queries get a little bit more complex is to kind of come into the IDE here and use it to debug my thinking around what that query should look like. And uh, the IDE makes it really easy to do that. And then I can kind of go back into the programming language and figure out, well, how do I re-implement that in terms of the underlying um, uh, connects query or the connects query as enhanced with within the objection query. So uh, super useful tool to have available to you uh, to be able to just issue these arbitrary queries. Another cool thing you can do here is if you go to one of the table names and say diagrams show visualization, it will actually give you a diagram for that table. So this is a another entity relationship diagram. It uses a slightly different syntax that we've seen before in class, but you should be able to figure out what the fields are and how they're related. What's really cool is if you go up here and click on public, for example, the schema itself, you can do the same thing, say show visualization, and it will show you a visualization of the entire database. And you can zoom in and out of this. So there's our film table, our actor table, and then the film actor associative table that connects films to actors in the many-to-many -many relationship. So this is a really helpful way to just kind of verify the structure of your database as you're, as you're creating it. And then when you're, uh, when you're done, you can close out of data grip and it's going to save all the information that you had put in before for your next connection and go about your business.